citrus is one of the best beginner fruit trees for new gardeners. They are not at all picky about soil, they don't require much pruning, and they're not hugely bothered by pests. And also, they start producing for you fruit within three to four years of planting. And that's better than most fruit trees. So let's get into how to properly plant a citrus tree. So today, we're gonna to be planting this Owari Satsuma orange tree. It's a mandarin, and it is a small tree that produces really sweet seedless fruit with a little bit of a leathery skin that makes it actually really easy to peel. Now I did buy one of these, the same variety last year, and I planted it in this 20 gallon container, which is also a big advantage of citrus is you can grow it either in a container or in ground. Try to choose a variety that doesn't grow too tall because that will make your pruning job easier. You won't have to prune it that much to keep it contained for the smaller containers. Now this bigger plant was the size of this guy when I bought it last year. And you can see it has pretty much doubled in height and also doubled in diameter. So it grows really, really fast. So let's cover some of the basics of citrus today. What variety to plant, when and where to plant, how to plant, some basics around pest management, and also some of the ongoing maintenance that you need to do to keep this healthy, thriving, and productive. Now, as you consider what varieties you want to choose to grow in your garden, some of the factors you need to consider are the cold hardiness of the plant. You also want to consider how big it will grow at full size. And most importantly, you also want to choose something that you actually like and enjoy. Now know that all citrus is cold hardy only from zones 8 through 11. Below that, you are going to need to plant it in a container because you're going to have to need to give it some winter protection. Even if you're growing it outdoors, you need to make sure that you protect it. Too. Speaking of protection, you have to give your young citrus plant protection for at least the first two years, whether you live in a warm climate or a cold climate. Make sure that they're not subject to even mildly frosty nights. And once they grow bigger, they're much hardier and they can handle things better. In fact, mature fruit trees are pretty frost tolerant. I don't have to give any protection in my zone 9B garden. And also know that the more acid the fruit, so like lime trees and lemons, they are less cold tolerant than some of the sweeter oranges. Those are much more hardy. Also know that there are different fruiting times for different varieties. For example, the navel orange will fruit from winter through spring and the Valencia orange will fruit from spring through fall. So choose varieties that you can stagger. Now, there are lemons and limes that actually produce all year round. For example, the Eureka and the Lisbon lemon produce all year round and the Bear's lime, super productive, also produces all year round. So choose those varieties if you can. Okay, now let's go plant this mandarin. I'm going to be planting this, like I said, in ground. Now make sure when you buy a citrus tree that you actually choose a young tree. They establish just a whole lot sooner and better than larger, older trees. Okay, new day, new outfit. It's time to plant our citrus tree. By the way, how do you like my outfit? My gardening overalls? <laughs> Anyway, if you guys are getting value from this video so far, please do make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. Costs you nothing, but it definitely helps grow the channel. Thank you. So when planting a citrus tree in ground, you need to follow the standard rules for planting a fruit tree. And I've got an in-depth video where I talk about all the steps that you need to go through in order to plant a fruit tree. So I will put a link to that video at the end of this, as well as somewhere over here. But I'm going to briefly go through the steps again while we plant the citrus tree. First and most important, location, location, location. Citrus, like any fruit tree, loves the sun and six to eight hours is an absolute necessity if you want to have a thriving tree that is producing great fruit for you. So do not skimp on that. Make sure that it gets full sun. This location is actually south facing. It's getting a little bit of shade right now from that fence, but it will get full sun as the day progresses. Now, as I shared in my other video, when it comes to planting a fruit tree, the lazy way is best. You want to plant the tree no deeper than it currently is in this spot. So just about the root ball depth is where you want to go. And, and the circumference of the hole should be about twice the circumference of the root ball. So not much digging involved and do not add any amendments to it at all. You want the fruit tree to really establish 
in the native soil because that's where the roots are going to be pushing out to eventually so you don't want to pamper it by giving it amendments otherwise especially with my hard clay it's going to treat this as a pot and the roots are going to start to curl if they don't get used to digging into the native soil so no amendments whatsoever any amendments that you want to add can be put on top after you plant the tree now just a closer look at this tree this is a grafted tree so in other words it has what's called a rootstock and on top of the rootstock is grafted the scion now the rootstock primarily determines the size that the tree will grow to and it also produces a really robust root system that will help the tree establish well the scion on the other hand which is the upper part is the one that produces the delicious high quality fruit so when you combine these two it's a match made in heaven now if you look closely it's kind of difficult to see but this is the point where the graft happened you do not want to bury the fruit tree too deep i always thought deeper is better right more chance for roots to develop no you can actually cause this bark to rot so you don't want to bury it any deeper than where the roots start to emerge from the trunk okay so we have chosen our nice sunny location we've dug a hole that is not too deep just about the size of the root ball and twice as wide circumference wise and now we're going to take this out of its container and plant it so when you take it out you don't want to pull it out by the trunk that might damage it what i like to do is kind of loosen it shake it around like this and loosen it and then you can gently start to lever it out you can see that the soil is starting to come away from the container there we go here it comes now the first thing you want to do is you want to examine the roots of this tree are they twirling and swirling around is it root bound you can actually see that the roots are pretty decent on this one not too root bound so i'm just going to loosen it up a little bit and then we're going to plant it so scratch it up like this now if i put it directly like this it's way too deep so i'm going to build a cone inside here and then i'm going to put it on top so that the base of this is level with the top of the soil now you definitely do not want to bury the root flare so this is the point where the roots are starting to emerge so right about here is where you want to plant it that's how deep you want to go let's put it off there for a little bit while i build my cone it was actually pretty easy to dig this hole because i used to have a compost bin sitting on top of this and that made the soil nice and soft and beautiful I also like to water in the hole nicely because this is a great opportunity to get the water nice and deep. All right, so I've built a little cone in the soil. It's just so much fun to play with clay, you guys. It reminds me of my childhood, but look at my California clay. Did you know that clay soil is the most nutrient dense soil? So if you've got clay soil, rejoice. You can always amend it and it adds amazing micronutrients to your soil. So a couple of things to do before you plant your tree. Remove the stake. It actually hampers the growth of the tree and prevents it from getting as strong in the trunk. You want your tree to be able to sway in the breeze so that it actually toughens up the trunk. So remove this. Also remove anything that is constricting the stem. This is another mistake that many gardeners make as they leave it on and that it just doesn't help the trunk grow as nicely as it should. So get rid of that as well. Or loosen it up substantially if you don't want to lose the label. So while you plant your tree, make sure that you just sort of spread the roots around this cone. Remember you want this root ball to be maybe just a little bit higher than your soil level. The tree will sink a little bit because you've loosened up the soil. So as you water it, it's going to sink just a little bit. I think that's just about right. You can see that this is the soil level 
and the root flare is just a little bit above. So now all I'm going to do is backfill this hole and I'm going to create a little bit of a swale and a berm around it so that when I water, the water will stay around this general area and not flow off everywhere else. Let's go ahead and backfill this. So one of the things when you're positioning your tree that you might want to pay attention to is your graft. If it is very highly exposed, you might want to point it in the direction where there is less sun. So in this particular case, this direction is south for me, this is north. So I would put my graft kind of facing in this direction just to protect it a little bit from the sun. One more thing that you're going to need to do to protect this from the sun is paint the trunk white. So I'll do that as a last step. But while we finish up the planting, I wanted to mention a couple of pests that you do need to worry about. Citrus is one of those things that doesn't have too many pests, and even the pests that it does have, it is able to very often overcome. The most serious pest is the Asian citrus psyllid. In fact, there is a label over here that says that this tree should not be taken out of the quarantine zone. So this is devastating citrus trees, like taking down entire groves of citrus in places like Florida and even in California, uh, there are some quarantine zones where it has been found. This is an insect that damages the tree in such a way that the fruits start to turn green and hard. It's also called citrus greening and it can literally devastate all your crops. So you wanna watch out for that one. Now, the other thing that I get quite frequently is aphids. Aphids love young shoots, especially in spring when there's a lot of growth and there's a lot of flowers starting to form. This thing gets horrible aphids. I had a horrendous aphid problem. The only way that I solve for that is by applying that little sticky tape around it to prevent the ants, which were protecting the aphids from crawling up. Once the ants we're not able to crawl up and protect the aphids. Lady beetles and the braconid wasps came in and took out all the aphids. So that was the only thing that I was able to do to save my Mexican lime tree. I'll make a more in-depth video about that separately. But other than that, citrus is not bothered very much by insects, which is really, really great. And a couple of other pests are scale, which is also a kind of insect that forms a black sticky coating on the stems. You also have leaf miner, which you will see little pathways in the leaves and um, they don't usually cause too much damage. White mites, broad mites, those are all the kinds of things that you could find with your citrus and one of the quick ways of taking care of those is just regularly once every week or so. Come and give it a bath, take your hose and spray it up and down and that way it will wash off, regularly wash off any of those insects that are starting to accumulate. Okay, let's give this tree some water. My mother always said that when you plant any tree, any plant, you give it what's called uira tani. Uira means life, tani means water. So water of life. That's what I'm giving it right now. And this will really help settle all the roots in and give them a nice little start. You can also see that I've created this sort of swale over here with a berm around the sides. So any excess water will stay in here and will continue to slowly seep into the soil. Now you do need to come and mulch around here. And that will really keep the moisture in the soil. Mulch provides a lid on the soil, which prevents it from evaporating. And especially in my really hot, dry California climate, mulch is an absolute must for any of my plants. So let's talk a little bit about maintenance of the citrus tree. I have good news for you. There isn't much maintenance. In fact, even pruning like you would do with regular fruit trees, uh, just come and snip off the optional branch here or there if it's kind of growing out of the way. But you do not want to prune the inside. You don't want that bowl shape that you have for most fruit trees. You actually want the leaves. The more leaves, the better for the fruit. So you want plenty of leaves. So don't prune as much as possible other than to shape it and to keep the height at the right level. Now, one thing that you do need to especially watch out for is what's called suckers. Now, suckers will grow from the bottom, from the rootstock, and they are so easily distinguishable because they will grow vertical and they grow very rapidly and they often have really sharp thorns. Now, those are rootstock shoots and they will not produce good fruit for you. 
So as soon as you see suckles, remove them immediately because they will take away from the growth of the main plant. They will use up the nutrients that your main plant needs. So remove the suckles as soon as you see them. Other than that, you're good to go. Make sure that during the first couple of years, particularly that you water frequently. So you, you would want to water this, especially in hotter weather, at least two to three times a week. Water it deeply. Once the tree grows much larger and the roots have spread out and they're able to access water deeper in the system, you don't need to water as frequently. But when the tree is young, for at least the first two years, you want to water frequently and deeply. And if you're up to it, you also want to remove any fruit the first couple of years. Just let the tree establish well build that strong root system and then starting year three you can start to harvest from it. Follow along folks if you want to see a comparison between the one that I'm growing in the container versus in ground. Now of course this is one year younger but it is in ground so it has more access to a lot of different nutrients versus the container plant that's going to be completely dependent on you. Fertilization for this plant I probably do a couple of times a year but for my containers, I give them a handful of citrus fertilizer once every month or so, particularly during the growing season. Do give this video a muddy thumbs up. And until next time, folks, live green and love your greens.